What's up guys? Well the birds may be chirping out here but uh, it's a rather dreary day out here and I want to uh, start this video by showing you something. I'm in a site that I've been before and it's been really rainy for the past like several days. Nothing but rain non-stop. And you remember the bridge that had no floor in it that I checked out and walked down right along Blue River? Check this out. There's the bridge right there, and that's Blue River overflowing the top of that bridge. Now, if you look back at my other video, you know how high up that water has to get to cross that bridge. And I'm, I'm 34, and I have never seen the water flood up that high before. I've never seen it go across that old bridge. And this is as far... I'm parked over here, but this is as far down as I can go till we hit water. It is extremely bad. And I wanted to go down to the site of my very first video of uh, the old abandoned lock and dam. And uh, I, I wanted to go down to that, but it's completely closed off down to Old Town Leavenworth because if it's like this right here, you can imagine what Old Town Leavenworth's like. The Ohio River is flooded over. Um, I did get word from somebody that uh, that, that side of that abandoned lock of dam, you can't even get to it because it's uh, completely flooded. Uh, they said the water is up inside the building itself. So, just like the 37 flood again. You see all this massive flooding, you got that old bridge there. It's amazing that how I was over here uh, last year and how much rain we've had to make it up this high. If you haven't seen the video, go check it out. You'll see how high up that bridge is from Blue River. And you'll see how high the water has to get for that to blow like that. It's insane. But carrying on, we're not here to just talk about the floodwaters. Um, that is going to be part of my subject. But I've got something else kind of special I want to do today too. So I'm not keeping that a surprise. And I have one more thing at the end of the video I want to show you as well. Something kind of sad, kind of good. I don't know. So let's get out of this rain and uh, let's get on with the video. Let's go. Here's a look at the Ohio River right here, Horseshoe Bend. Look how flooded that is over there in Kentucky. And I can't even get down to Old Town Livingworth. It's uh, blocked off, you know, they've got the police sitting there watching it, so I can't get down in there to check it out. But I'm, but this is the exact reason why Old Town Leavenworth moved out. And I don't know if I can zoom in a little bit, a little bit down through here. But right about here is the site of my very first video. That's the old lock and dam, and you can see how flooded that is down there. It is amazing how full that is of water. And you can obviously see by my example, like I said in the very first video, why that dam didn't really help much on floating, floating control. Because it is just the way it is, it's just really bad. And there's some houses and stuff right down here. That is completely flooded up. I don't know if maybe I can zoom in a little bit. I don't know if you can see that or not. But right around here, there's a bunch of houses and stuff. It's completely flooded. And you remember my other video? You remember my video walking down through there? I've showed you how high this water has to get in order to come up this high. So. I haven't seen flooding like this in a very, very long time. But I don't think I've ever seen it get up into the, uh, to the old lock house. It's definitely, definitely bad. So I said I had a surprise at the end of my video. The best thing about my videos is my videos and I can do what I want. So it's not the end of the video. It's kind of more in the middle of the video, I guess. I don't know. But I said I, wanted, I had this, this little surprise, kind of sad, kind of good, kind of mixed feelings on it. Uh, I want to show you this. Remember the bank that I showed you that the, the 
from the other video about the filming location for the movie Madison. You're down here in Marengo. Remember the bank I showed you that was uh, the roof had caved in and stuff? Here's what they're doing to it now. They're tearing it down. It's kind of sad, but uh, I guess it's kind of a good thing that they're getting rid of this thing. It's dangerous, it's old, needs to be gotten rid of. Check us all out. I remember walking in those front doors out there. And I'm wondering if that's the safe over there. I can't remember where the safe was. I know you'd walk in through that door, then you go, you turn, and you go in through that little opening over there where that brick goes across. And that's where you'd uh, take care of business. Talk to the tellers or whatever. And these areas are more office area. Check it out. And there's the uh, employee entrance and exit. Yeah, I remember my mom was, used to work here. And I remember coming down here when I was a kid to meet her. Whenever she got off work, I used to come down here and meet her. And, uh, and it's also, I think, my very first bank I had was right here. So a lot of memories, kind of mixed emotions. Okay, so are you ready for a surprise? Here we are in a much talked about video that I do for the longest time. Finally doing it. Marengo Cave. It's been a long time since I've been here and I'm looking forward to going down in there again. Let's go. And it's 60 feet below where you're going to be today. And the only thing you're going to get is the actual water in the cave around some of the walkways. One main thing that happens when it never rains is you do get dripped on the water here. Yeah. With 100% humidity, the cave is always wet.
things like that. So they, they, they get down here? Yeah, they got their own way getting down here. Being that small, they get their really, really tight spots. For bats, they hibernate from between November to April, so that's why the sky is still down here. He's going to be down until about the middle of April, huh. unless he decides to wake up early. They do eat mosquitoes, bugs like that. They can actually can eat 600 bugs in an hour. Yeah. So that's like eating 125 sandwiches for us in a full day. There's other bats here. This is the eastern thermistral. We also got little brown and big brown bats. These guys have a wingspan about inch, eight inches long. The other two can go up to 10 to 12 inches wide. And there is vampire bats. There's a thing called vampire bats, but they don't live in the U.S. Yeah. And they actually suck the blood of farm animals like cows, horses, not actually humans. So. <laughs> And bats only live to about 25 years. See if we can get a coin to stick. It's amazing all the coins up here. All right, let's try. Well, that didn't work. Let's see. I got another coin on me somewhere. Stick. All right, we'll try a quarter. Still didn't stick. This is one of those things that you remember when you come here when you're younger yeah. and you come back. <laughs> Down here. Every once in 
once in a while take all these off the ceiling and give them to charity. And last time we done that was in 99. We had a grand total of $3,800 worth of coins from up wow. there. Wow. So no tell how much is up there now. But how many, ever, how many years do you go up there and clean off the coins? We try to do it 20 years in between. We mm -hmm. need to do it more often, but it just takes so long. Oh, so yeah, I can long. imagine. I can imagine. <laughs> We need to do it soon because it's getting hard to stick up there. Yeah. <laughs> Try another one. No, that one hit the ground. It's very hard to get these to stick. There's coins just littered all over this floor in here too. that's happened in a couple years, to oh. be honest with you. Most of the time people propose down here oh. and go somewhere else. Oh. But like the first wedding down here was in 1909, already painted the ceiling back there. And they just took wherever they wanted to go. Most of them took place on the Crystal Palace tour because when you go into a really beautiful room of formations behind you, people like to stay there. Oh. But I guess so. I mean, we got new owners last year, so that could be another change they're doing. Oh. Now this hillside will we had volunteers come down here and greet cave visitors at concerts. They would sit on those rocks up there. And we also had church down here. I'll show you a rock for that here in a minute where it's a place at. So right around the corner here, down across the, the rope flights. So I'll see that there. Talk more about that. Mm -hmm. We're back on the second level, too. That ledge up there is that first level. It was on this bandstand down here in this cave that I played the drums when I was with the community band I have mentioned about several times. Sadly, they don't have concerts down there no more. They just do a few Christmas caroling songs and that's about it. At the end, you will see how much of a pain it was to have a concert here because you have to drag all your equipment down these narrow stairs and it's very, very
very slippery. We call that room Elf's Hall. In 1970s, we had Boy Scouts come down here and spend the night and then go to sleep back right here in that room. They don't do that anymore. They don't do that anymore. No. Well, actually, last year we started this. That's why they done it. But for five years, they've done this. They eventually stopped because of financial reasons. We got new owners last year and decided to bring that overnight program back. So now every Saturday, we had groups come down here and spend the night. And if you didn't see, there was a group, actually a crawling group coming through here. They're spending the night in the cave tonight. What are the initials writing over there? Yes, that's actually a small part of it. You'll see all kinds of writing through here because it became illegal in 1947, so all these dates before then. The reason why that over there is kind of highlighted is because those three used to work here. Hmm. That 13 stands for 1913. The JW stands for James Weathers. He's one of the owners. The LS stands for Lewis Stewart. He was the brother of Samuel Stewart. And that WC stands for William Clifton. He's kind of like the top guy who used to work here. He worked here 52 years, from 1913 all the way to 1965. And he has walked about 75 to 80,000 miles underground during his career. He retired at 80 and died eight years later, so at 88. And there is rumors saying that he haunts the Cape. So. Which I, I still don't believe it. Only because when we hear a strange sound down here, we're going to want him. You're going to see camera cases here in a little bit. We'll take family photos, put the camera in the cases. If we leave those cases in the day down here in the cave, one we'll of the locks lock. And we have no key to it, so we have to break into the case. If we leave it up in the gift shop all day, we'll be good. So we're going to him that he locks the cases on us. <laughs> Other things like that. We're still safe down here. <laughs> <laughs> church at. The minister is going to talk about this big rock right here, which we call Paul Pitt's Rock. So this one right here. And the people used to stand right behind it. So these steps right here, they made those to get up onto this flat surface, and they would stand up here and hit hmm. And this rock beside Paul Pitt's Rock here, this one we call the Eagle. You can see one, kind of like a side view of it. So you got the head right here, the eye, and the bee, the mouth a little bit open, and the wings coming out right here. And then on the ceiling, in the shadow, does anybody see anything up there? Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. There's a hook thing there. Yeah. It depends on how you look at it, what you see in it. Girls, one of them. Oh, it's people kissing, right? Yeah. Those two are kissing. Who are they? Rock people. <laughs> Think about presidents. Oh yeah. Really? Like, like George Washington. There's that president right? right there on the right. George Washington. Right? Mm -hmm. right? I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah. It is George Washington. Yeah. So 
George right here. That's his wife, Martha. <laughs> right cool. there is George's big nose. Yeah. Hers is kind of lined up with his. Of course, you got the face, the face. And they're getting ready, get, getting ready to kiss up there. That's why it's really funny that Martha has a question mark over her head up there. <laughs> <laughs> and on the back side of George is a gorilla right here. The forehead. I don't know, you know. Those are the three main ones that I see up there. Those are the <laughs> So you got the head right here, the trunk here, and the ear. The second thing is a mummy. So you got the head, body, and feet. And the third is ice cream cones, which is right here and right there. So I'm gonna throw some more on in those. After almost falling down the stairs, I wanted to show you this is the way that you would bring in your equipment if you were to put on a concert. And you see how much of a pain it was to bring in all of your equipment. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed my visit to Marengo Cave. If you ever come to Marengo Cave, uh, want to go to Marengo Cave, go check it out. Uh, they've got that tour I was just on. They got uh, I think like two other tours. Um, it's really, really beautiful down there, and you take a better time and see the things that I couldn't get. And I do apologize for any kind of um, dark images or hard to see things that are or hard uh, uh, camera angles or whatever. I apologize for all that. It's just hard to do, hard to film when you're down there, 200 feet below the ground, and it's real pitch black because there's no natural light down in there. So it kind of makes it a little bit difficult to uh, to see down there. So I appreciate you joining me. Check out this creek behind me. Check out how floated that is. Usually that creek is not that full. Usually you could just usually you just go walking right through it. You know, it's not very full at all. You see all the rocks and stuff. It's not never that that full. But um, it does look like it has been full. Has has been higher. See those water marks on the those supports looks like it was higher but uh, it looks like one of those raging rapids and you, know, you go into like fair, uh, theme parks you know you ride on it's what that looks like okay so anyways hope you enjoyed this video and like I say I highly recommend go to Marengo Cave it's a big national landmark and uh, while you're out there go to Squire Boom Cavern and uh, Wyandotte Cave it's really cool out there and I'll be filming those two also and just in case you can't ever get out there I'll be filming those two as well later on. So thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, guys.